A mine loves. <laughs> you are highly, highly, highly welcome. So, in this video, I am going to show you how to draft, cut, and sew this luxury tie front and top with color. And um, if this is something you you want to learn, do well and keep watching, and don't forget to practice as well. So, let's dive right in. So these are the items needed, your fabric, so I got a crepe fabric and it's one and a half yard. If you desire this exact thickness, shyness, texture in this initial top that I got the inspiration from, then make sure you get a Dorsher's fabric that would give you the thickness, the shyness, the texture, everything you want, yeah? Then you get your bed head. I could not get the bigger bed head, so I just had to settle for this smaller size of bed head. But if you can get the bigger bed head, then no problem, go for that, yeah? Then the other one um, item we'll be needing is your paper stay or your lightest gum stay. This is needed for the color to make it um, firmer or to make it firm for your color, yeah? And for this um, tutorial, I'll be drafting on a pattern paper first before I transfer it to the fabric. If you wish to draft directly on your fabric, no problem, you can go ahead and you know do that. But for this tutorial, I am drafting firstly on the pattern paper before I eventually get to transfer it to the fabric. So there's an item that's supposed to be here, that ought to be here, that is not here, and that is the aiming gum. This is also very important in making this top. So we'll just go straight into drafting. So the first thing you would have to do is we're going to mark out the length we want for the top. So for me, I want my top to be 20 inches long. So I'm going to add one inch for aiming allowance. So in total, that's 21 inch, right? 21 inches. So I'm just going to mark 21 inches across like so. Then I'm going to take my rule and mark a straight line like so. So you know it's a crop top. Yeah, so I'll mark a straight line. So next, I'm going to place my um, shoulder measurement here. So you divide your shoulder measurement by two. So for me, I have 14 inches for my shoulder measurement. So 14 divided by two gives me seven inches of which I've marked out. So next, I'm going to mark out my sleeve length from those points. Yeah, so I want my sleeve to be 13 inches long. So I'm just going to go ahead and mark out 13 inches. So I want my sleeve to be relaxed, so I'm just going to come down here by one inch and then take my rule and slant this to the shoulder point. So this is optional, this is optional, but for me, I want a relaxed sleeve, the reason for this. So I'm just going to slant it from this point to the shoulder, like so. Then I'll go ahead and mark out the length I want for how big I want my sleeve to be. So I want my sleeve to be 15 inches wide. Yeah, so I've marked out 15 inches. Then I'll go ahead and just rule a straight line like so, as you can see. So after marking out the straight line, next you're going to mark out your waist measurement on this full length line so in doing that you're going to divide your waist measurement by four so for me after dividing my waist measurement by four i got 8.75 so i'm just going to go ahead and mark that out then i'll add one inch for sewing allowance so the next thing i am going to create a beautiful curve from this point to this point so if you have your curve rule, you can go ahead and use your curve rule. But if you do not, do not worry. Go ahead and use your hands to create a beautiful curve just the way I did it. So this is me creating, trying to create a perfect curve. So this is it, guys. So the next thing um, is the neckline. So for the neck width, I am going to 
go in and mark 2.5 inches you know we are using a color so i do not want it that wide so i'll come down by one inch so mind you this is the back pattern that we are drafting so this is the back neckline that we just drafted out so i'm going to go ahead and cut this out so this is me cutting so please watch how i did the cutting So this is it so I'm just going to write back pattern here because this is the back pattern so I'm going to go ahead and fold my fabric it's time for cutting so you fold your fabric into two like so and make sure that the wrong side of the fabric is outside that is it is facing you the wrong side is facing you, you grab so next you're just going to place your pattern paper on the fabric and you're going to hold it in place using your office pin the reason for holding it in place is so that it does not shift or slip while you're cutting because you want to get a perfect cutting you grab so you're just going to hold it in place using your pin your office pin precisely so you just go ahead and do that so after doing that you go ahead and cut so mind you when cutting do not add half an inch on your fabric when cutting um, because reason being that um on the pattern paper we have already added all the necessary allowance needed so there's no need of adding any extra allowance again when you're cutting you understand so um <laughs> least i forget let me introduce myself my name is whitney iy i am a fashion and lifestyle youtuber to my returning subscribers you guys are welcome back and if you're just coming on this channel for the very first time you are highly 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 welcome do what well to hit the subscribe button and be a part of this beautiful amazing family love ya Mwah. so next we are going to draft the <laughs> front fabric and as you can see my fabric is already on fold so i'm just going to bring in my back pattern and first thing first we're going to alter the neck if the pattern confuses you just indicate your shoulder and your waistline you grab so we're going to alter the neckline remember this neckline that we have here is for the back um pattern right so we're going to create the neckline for the front pattern so in creating the neckline remember we've um, actually came down by one inch for the front line so we're going to come down by three inch so in total meaning we came down by four inch on the front uh, pattern on the front leg uh, neckline sorry yeah so i'm just going to mark three inch so we're going to create a curl from this width here um this 2.5 inches neck width to this um three inches we just marked out so you just create a slant like this so this is like you are creating a v-neck you understand so we just create a slant like this and let me just um show you these three inches here yeah so if you measure from this place down you see it's four inches so I hope you understand what i'm not trying to talk about or trying to see in <laughs> hand so you just go ahead and cut it out so you just go ahead and cut it out so this is it guys so we have created the neckline for the front pattern so you just go ahead and straighten out your fabric remember it should be on fold yes with the wrong side facing you mm -hmm. so next thing is you're just going to mark two inches in from this center front so just mark two inches down you grab just mark two inches two inches two inches the way you see me doing it from the center front size from that midpoint you grab mm -hmm. so you just mark two inches till you feel like you have gotten to the full length of the top so this is it then you're going to take your rule and just you know draw a straight line like so
so you just draw a straight line then you're going to bring in your pattern paper so you bring in your pattern paper and you're going to place it like so so it's going to start meaning you're going to place your pattern paper on this line that you just ruled yeah on this two inches line that you just ruled in so you're going to place it like so and you're going to use your pin to hold it down you're going to go ahead and use your pin to hold it down i hope this this is very easy to understand if you when you're sewing it or when you're cutting it just follow the step-by-step -step process and you know this is very easy you grab so you're just going to hold it down with your pin so that it does not shift when you're cutting or doing the necessary blending and all of that So after holding it down with your pin, you're going to come in and take your um, your chalk and you're going to blend the neckline like so. You're going to blend it. The reason for the blending is to avoid any form of sharp edge on this um, front, this center front. Yeah, that's the reason for the blending. So we're going to blend. Just make sure you blend it well. That's give it a nice curve to the extent to eliminate any sharp edge when you're sewing or once you're done sewing, you grab. During sewing, you can also use your sewing to blend it. If you feel it still does not blend um, well enough for you, you can use your sewing to also blend it in. I will show you how to go about that once we get to the sewing um, section yeah so next is creating the bed so because the bed head i got is of the small size i'm going to make sure the bed itself is also small enough to go through the bed head more of like small enough for the bed head to hold in place you grab so for the bed head i'm just going to come down by nine inches from the waistline on the fabric as you can see I'm just going to come down by nine inches as you can see it's nine inches then i'll go ahead and give it a nice curve like so to the nine inches i'm just going to give it a curve from the waistline to the nine inches i marked out you grabs so if you have if you were able to get a bigger bed head then do me the honor of increasing your belt and make sure you have a width of about four inches in essence what i'm trying to say is your belt should be four inches wide if you were able to get a bigger bed head you grab so make sure you give it a nice curve because of course the belt is curved so you just make sure you give it a nice curve if you have your french rule you can use it in um you can use the rule to achieve the curve but if you do not you can also use your hand like me so i'm going to go ahead and um cut yeah so i'm just going to go ahead and cut like so as you can see so i'm just going to cut this And also don't forget to indicate on the fabric, your shoulder and your waistline if you feel confused about 
the patterns or whichever it is so we're going to go right away and cut out the interfacing for both the front and the back pattern so for the back pattern you get a piece of fabric and fold it into two like this making sure the center back is facing you then you place your back pattern on it so the center back of the back pattern should be lying on the fabric you want to use for the uh, should be lying on the center back of the fabric you want to use for your interface and you grab so then you're just going to mark out your neckline on the interfacing you're just going to you know outline your neckline out on the interfacing so after doing that you're going to mark three inches so you can decide to increase the number of inches you want depending on how long you want your interfacing to be so you just go ahead and cut off this neckline then you just come here from the neckline you're just going to mark you can decide to mark three inches you can decide to mark out four inches depending on how long you want your interfacing to be so for me i prefer my interfacing to be three inches long for the back so the more reason i am marking three inches round like so so i'm connecting the three inches now and i'll go ahead and cut So I'm just going to cut it out. So you can see the outcome of the interfacing for the back. So I'm just going to open up the back piece and place the interfacing so you see how it fits. So you can see, so this is it guys, and this is it. So then for the interfacing for the front, you also place a piece of fabric, which is also on fold then you place your um, front pattern on that piece of fabric so you're going to take your chalk as well and mark out the um, draw out the front neckline that is on your front pattern on the fabric you grab so you're just going to outline the neckline on the fabric the neckline from the front pattern on the fabric you understand so make sure it sits well and make sure you outline it well properly take your time don't be in haste so this is it guys then you come towards the bed area and you take your tape and give it half an inch so it's going to be half an inch all through so you're going to mark half an inch on the interfacing on the fabric sorry so you're just going to connect like so as you can see so you're going to connect like so after connecting you're just going to take off the front pattern and then you take your tape and just mark four inch from the um, line you outlined you're just going to mark four inch i hope you understand if you do not understand just you know drop your question on the comment section and i will try as much as possible to give you a reply i'll try as much as, as <laughs> I'll try as much as possible to respond so as you can see i'm just marking four inch four inch four inch four inch four inch and voila i have connected it so i'm just going to go ahead and cut So you can see we have two interfacing for the front pattern, right?
so next you're going to cut out the cuff for the sleeve so for the cuff um, for the sleeve you would want to you know bring out a piece of fabric and fold into two like so in measuring for the cuff you just have to measure around your arm where the cuff is going to be seated so you just measure round it so for me after measuring i got 11 inches so i'm just going to make sure i fold this fabric properly and after folding properly i'm just going to make sure that this side is straight yes and then i'm going to go ahead and measure 11 inches and add one inches for sewing allowance so in total i am cutting 12 inches long for the cuff yeah and i'm just going to mark that out then i want the cuff to be three inches wide so i'll be adding half an inch for sewing allowance so meaning i'm going to be marking 3.5 inches wide for the cuff that is how wide i want that is how wide i want the cuff to be so i'm going to just cut as you can see i have cut out two of the cuff one for the right hand and the other for the left hand um, side you grab so you can see it is 3.5 inches wide so I'm going to go ahead now and sew the patterns together so for sewing the patterns together you're going to place your back fabric like so making sure the right side of your back pattern is facing you then you're going to place your front patterns on it and while placing your front patterns make sure that the right side of your front pattern is facing the right side of your back pattern you grab so you're going to go ahead and close up the shoulders yeah so you go ahead and close up the shoulders so you're going to do the same thing on the interfacing as well you're going to close up the shoulders of the interfacing So I have closed up the shoulders of the interfacing. So what I'll do next is I'm just going to trim off this excess. I'll trim it off and make sure it's not so deep, like so. So after trimming off, I'm just going to aim round to make it neater. You're just going to aim round to this point and do the same thing on the other side as well. You're just going to aim. That's just that's just it for the interfacing. So as you can see, I have aimed it round and ironed as well. So the next step, we're going to join the interfacing to the top. In doing that, you place your top on the table and then you bring in your interfacing. So in placing your interfacing on the top or pattern, make sure that the right side of your interfacing is facing the right side of your fabric, of your top, you understand? It's facing the right side of your top. Then you neatly arrange it along the neckline down to the bed. Um, to the belt to the belt yeah so you just make sure it's neatly arranged like so as you can see so make sure that the shoulder that you joined at the interfacing is lying directly on the shoulder of the top you understand so you know this um top has a collar so for that simple reason we're not going to join it the normal way so what we're going to do is you know a normal um neckline depth is three inches you get so we're just going to mark the three inches here a regular neckline depth is three inches that's for a normal neckline depth if you're just drawing a normal neckline depth so that's why we're marking down 
three inches so you mark down the three inches and then you're going to use your pin to hold it like so use your pin to secure it like so so from this point we're going to sew around like this like this to get to this point and we're going to do the same thing on the other side as well we're going to sew so you're going to sew with half an inch so as you can see i have sewn it together and i'm just going to cut off this extra um, piece here at the bed um, section on the bed section so i'm just going to trim it off so if you've watched to the extent of this video and you're yet to hit the subscribe button like what are you waiting for <laughs> hit the subscribe button and be a part of this amazing family then you can decide to you know turn it to the right side turn the bed to the right side and go ahead and iron the bed area So, this is it guys. So I'm just trying to arrange it properly so you get the picture of it so you don't get confused on what we are doing right now. So this is it guys. So next we are going to cut and sew in the collar. And to cut the color you're going to measure this point from this point you marked out that three inches you're going to measure from one point to the other that you marked out on your neckline you grab so you're just going to measure around so i got 14 inches here so i'll get a piece of fabric and then I'm going to mark 14 inches which I just measured out then I'll mark one inch for sewing allowance I'm going to be marking 15 inches all through then I'll go ahead and cut this out next you will fold in your fabric like so so I want my collar to be two and a half inch wide so I'll be adding half an inch for sewing allowance. So in total, I am to get three inches. So if you want your fabric to be three inches wide, you will add half an inch. So in total, you have to cut out 3.5 inches wide for your collar you grab. So you can see mine is three inches all through. So next is I'm going to go ahead and iron in this um, paper stay. So you can see I have ironed in the paper stay on one side of the fabric. So you go ahead and fold it in and close up this ends with half an inch ish. So after closing up the ends of the collar, you're going to go ahead and place it in between your fabric and your interfacing. In between your patterns and your interfacing. Or should I say in between the top and the interfacing so the color is going to be in between the top and the interfacing is going to be between it between the top and the interfacing hope you understand so you're just going to place your color so in case it confuses you you can just you know create a notch to know your center point on the color and on the fabric on the top so you just go ahead and place your color like so and place the interfacing on top like so and then you sew it round so as you can see I have attached the collar as you can see so measure make sure you measure it that it is three inches from your shoulder just make sure you measure that it is accurately three inches that you marked from your shoulder I hope you do understand so we're just going to go right ahead and arrange this so you would see the picture of what we are doing here so next you're going to bring in your um, aiming gum and we're going to place it in between 
the fabric the pattern and your interfacing like so and you iron so while using your aiming gun please take your time don't be in ace don't rush it so next you're going to sew in this cuff on the sleeve so i'm just going to arrange this top so you would see you would understand way better so this is the sleeve part so this is the sleeve part and this is the part we're going to you know gather on this cuff so you're going to take your cuff like this and then you make sure the right side of your top of your sleeve is facing the right side of the um cuff you understand so you're just going to create gathers or ruffles whichever way you understand it so you're just going to create it like so or you could just you know sew a loose stitch on it like this and then you drag it together you're still going to get gathers or ruffles so i'll show you once i am done so this is what i was talking about you can see the ruffles or gathers so when i open it it's like this so you can see the right side of the sleeve so we are almost done so you make sure you do this on both sides of the sleeves yeah you make sure you do this on both sides of the sleeves so we're just going to arrange our top now should i call it top or piece <laughs> i don't know we're just going to arrange the top now so you get the picture so it does not confuse you So we're just going to go ahead and close up the sides close up the sides using one inch close it up with one inch you know we gave it one inch allowance at the waist side when we are sewing so you close it up with one inch and then you aim round. so when i was talking about blending with sewing this was what i was talking about on the center front you can see the way i blended it to make sure it was not having any form of sharp edge so when you turn it over to the right um side and you turn it over to the right side this is how it should look like this is how it should be it should not have any form of sharp edge just the way you're seeing it so guys your luxury top is ready super super ready so the best help